YouTube, Final Community, Beatles fans, random people on the internet. Hey, my name is Giggins. Uh, today we're going to talk about something a little bit different. Bootlegs. Beatles bootlegs, in fact. This guy right here. Uh, this one is known as Songs and Pictures of the Beatles. And I wanted to make this video because I couldn't find one on YouTube um, about this. And I thought I'd help educate or just show off what this thing looks like. So... The original record of this is known as Songs and Pictures and Stories of the Beatles, of the Fabulous Beatles. And it came with a little gatefold. This part of the, of the jacket flipped out like a gatefold. And that's where the stories were. And so because there's no gatefold here, there's no stories. So got to make up your own. Um, here's the back of it. Where you're able to paste your picture down here. So John loves whoever. Ringo loves whoever, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the biggest way to tell this is a counterfeit, number one, is the gatefold not being there. Number two, For Me To You is on it. Look at that. For Me To You. Very cool to see that on an early album. Obviously, it's a fake, but um, I'm pretty sure For Me To You was only on that Jolly What album when that one came out. Um, so yeah, For Me To You replaces Anna on here, Love Me Do. Uh, replaces Ask Me Why, and P.S. I Love You is in a different place, and P Please Please Me is in a different place, swapped on here. In a nutshell, VJ Records owned the rights to a select amount of Beatles songs until October 15th, 1964. And in that time, I mean, this is peak Beatlemania in 1964, uh, they loved having the Beatles in it as part of their roster. And when they knew that everything was going to expire pretty soon, you know, introducing the Beatles had been selling like crazy because, you know, these were just songs that were not on Meet the Beatles. And so, of course, they were going to be in competition with each other. Um, but their license was going to expire. Capital was going to regain those new songs to put out the early Beatles, which didn't sell that well because people already had those songs. So... Knowing that their time was going to come, VJ in their infinite wisdom said, let's repackage this as many times as possible. So for the real one, the actual record of this, um, it's just introducing the Beatles, but with a different cover and jacket, it's just introducing the Beatles again. And they also did it with Frankie Valli and the first four seasons versus the Beatles, which was again the same thing as a double LP, golden hits of Frankie Valli and the four seasons, paired with introducing the Beatles. So... People bought that record sometimes two or three times over again, or maybe it was the only copy they had. But from what I can figure out, going through the history of this thing, these bootlegs started popping up in the late 60s, um, well into the early 80s. And so I'm not really sure how to judge how old this is. The only historical reference I have against this, this came from a friend's relative who was buying records in the 60s and early 70s. So... From what I could tell, just historically based on the rest of their collection, which was a lot of, um, you know, Credence, Led Zeppelin, um, you know, late 60s kind of stuff. I'm guessing it's a late 60s, early 70s pressing. I just have no way to tell, but let me open this thing up. I put it in a MoFi sleeve to keep it nice and, <laughs> you know, if you're going to have bootlegs, treat them well. Um, another way to spot a bootleg is look at the label. If you see introducing the Beatles and the Beatles split by the spindle hole where one's below the other instant bootleg, the real ones have all the information above the spindle hole. Let me flip it over. Yeah, so side two starts off with P.S. I love you instead of please please me, which is rather interesting. Um, the first cut I saw her standing there doesn't have the one two three it just starts off with fa and then it starts <laughs> there's no one two three in the beginning um which is definitely it makes for sort of an awkward listen which because you're always expecting to hear paul have that intro um overall the sound is kind of wobbly um definitely a lot of wow and flutter and the dynamics are kind of weird i don't know if that was because of the source material it may have been like a different like an actual record it was copy to a different record or something to a tape um there may have been problems there but sound wise it just kind of faded and out and i know it's not my gear because I've, I've upgraded a lot of stuff recently so i know it's not that but um i mean it's a bootleg you're gonna get what you're gonna get so it's something too crazy there but um my other interesting fact that i learned while doing some research on this thing was that introducing the beatles the real thing of this the jolly what album the four seasons album 
most of those were readily available in record stores well into mid-1965, um, basically until supply ran out. And then introducing the Beatles got so bootlegged, it sounds like bootleg makers and collectors of records were kind of like, well, what else can we make? <laughs> so they dragged this thing out from the dead and started bootlegging this thing. But yeah, when my buddy showed me this in the collection, we, we FaceTimed one day and he showed me, he was showing me records he wanted to give me and he pulled this thing out and I was like, whoa, no way. Cause this thing goes for crazy amounts of money when it's new or when it's just in general, just finding one. But I saw I had the shrink on it and I was like, you know, a bit of a heart stop moment. I was like, oh my God, this is like, that's like a holy grail type of thing. And then um, he pulled it out and I was like, can you tell if there's a, like a jacket? Is there like a gatefold on it? And you know, it was just the single and I was like, oh damn. <laughs> so, so close to having an original, uh, fairly rare album. But yeah, not much to say about it beyond that. It's been, uh, it was bootlegged well into the 80s and um, sound wise is okay. But I mean, VJ got their use out of this thing too. I mean, they, there was a poster for this thing, you name it. Um, the original one of, I'm just looking at my facts really quick here. Oh no, I don't have any sort of charting on this one. No, nope, I don't. Never mind. I was going to look at some uh, historical billboard charts with this guy, but I got nothing on it. I'm sure it charted somewhere because it was the Beatles in 1964, so I'm sure it did. But yeah, that's it. Quick little video Beatles bootleg of uh, songs and pictures of the fabulous Beatles. So let me know if you guys have this, if you've seen it. Um, I've got a small Beatles bootleg collection. I've got probably five or six bootleg records. Not too much. Um, and most of them are just like random titles. They're not ripoffs of something real. So let me know if you guys have this. Let me know what you thought of this thing. Um, kind of a cool little oddity. I'm stoked to have it. I know it's fake, but I'm actually kind of like honored to own something like this because it's a part of fandom. You know, bootlegging somebody's music a lot of the times is the ultimate thank you because um, you're showing how much of a fan you are that you'd remake one of their albums that no longer exists. It's kind of a cool thing. So that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been Beatles Songs and Stories. And uh, let me know what you all think. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.